Now, if we're just looking at an H323 call flow, okay, H323 alone, forget about the gatekeepers, uses Q931, and that's the call signaling protocol in an IP network. So we will see setup messages, for example, and that is the message that is going to initiate the call. Information messages carry the dialed digits. Send, type, and receive, the overlapping signaling. And the setup message could carry some of the digits, but initially it's the information message that usually does. The call preceding message it, it follows the initial setup message in the case of uh, indicating are more digits coming? <laughs> are more digits coming until the timeout value is reached? Alerting says, are okay, ring, 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 or meh, 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 for the busy signal. If it's ringing, we expect that the next thing is someone might answer, you don't have to, but if they did, <laughs> then the connection will be established and the D channel sees some information flowing down. It's saying, hey, they're connected. There's it also includes information like what channel is being used, so we don't try to use that channel again. So it's in use. Once we hang up or disconnect, the disconnect messages need to be sent out so we free up the channel. So either side might indicate that the call was ended if I hang up first or whatever, but those messages will be sent down the D channel again to say, okay, channel 22 is now free. <laughs> you can have it back in the pool and we can make phone calls or receive phone calls coming down it. Now let's throw a gatekeeper in the mix. These are some of the common gatekeeper messages that we might see running through our network if we have one. There's a GRQ. This is when the endpoint attempts to auto-discover a gatekeeper. You might see that multicast message. There's the GCF. That's the confirm if, okay, I found you, yep, okay, sounds good. <laughs> let's register. <laughs> Um, a gatekeeper reject if the gate, nope, I don't want you registering with me. So you might see a, a GRJ, so that's going to be a reject message. Then we have RRQ, which is a registration request. So once I find a gatekeeper, and let's say they don't reject me, then I will attempt to register with it. So I will send a request saying, hey, I'd like to register with you. And if everything goes well, and the gatekeeper accepts me, then I'll get an RCF a confirmation. If things didn't go so well, then I'm going to get a reject message of an RRJ saying, yeah, no, I'm not letting you register with me. Um, unregistration request. So now let's say that I'm an endpoint and I have unplugged, powered off. You need the gatekeeper to know that you've gone away. So you want URQ messages, which is an unregistration request. So I'm unregistering from you, Mr. Gatekeeper, because I'm, I'm going home for the night. No, I'm, I'm unplugged and I'm no longer available. So you might see a URQ. Uh, a UCF is a, is a confirmation that that happened. And then, yeah, you know what? You were previously registered with me, so I don't know why you're telling me that you want to unregister. That might produce a URJ. <laughs> And then finally, if I want to initiate a call, you start to see ARQ messages to ask for a location. I, hey, I wanna you know, set up this call. Here's the number, you know, help me out here. So these RAS messages, you know, once we've registered and now we've asked for help, then we wanna make sure that the messages that are now transpiring are dealing and working through the connection or, or finding the endpoint. So admission confirmation, that's where the gatekeeper grants permission for that call. Okay, so we need permission even. And there's an ARJ, which is a reject, which means a couple of things. It might not mean anything horrible. It might mean that the endpoint isn't registered with the gatekeeper and it doesn't know how to find it. Or it's unregistered now. <laughs> Sorry, don't know about it. Call admission control could also kick in because the gatekeeper can keep track of bandwidth because everything registers with it. It knows when you're setting up phone calls so it can have a pool or a group uh, of information like a big bunch of bandwidth and say, okay, we've got four phone calls going on. They start deducting that. Oh, wait, we're out of bandwidth between that location and this location. 
sorry, call admission control kicks in and rejects it. There's also a defined policy that you could set up that just out and outright denies a phone call. So you've got, got that instance. Then if the endpoints want to terminate the call, we've got to disengage because especially for call admission control, we need to know that the call hung up. So that way that bandwidth goes back into the pool. And so the next time a call comes through for those locations, the call admission control can kick in and say, yes, we have bandwidth available and all that good stuff. So disengage requests and then a confirmation that yes, okay, the call has terminated successfully. Bandwidth went back in the pool. If it can't release it, that's a tough one because that's a DRJ, a, dis, a disengage reject, which could be a potential problem because if we can't get the bandwidth put back into the pool, this might be some messages we're looking for to troubleshoot. There's also a possibility that you and I establish an audio call and we find out we both support video and we want to set up a video call in the midst of this audio call. Well, how do we do that? You know, especially if the gatekeepers keep a track of the bandwidth. Well, the endpoint can request the change by pressing the, the button to turn the video camera on. The BRQ bandwidth request can be sent out and we either get, <laughs> yes, you can have it or sorry, but the requested information that you need for bandwidth is not available and uh, we can't give it to you. <laughs> so we either get a reject or a confirmation for allowing that video call mid audio call. Now, if the gatekeeper is part of your H323 world, it has to be part of the loop. So when we want to make a phone call, like endpoint A wants to call endpoint B, we first have to ask the gatekeeper. Well, we asked our local gateway and it didn't know. <laughs> and it said, look, I don't know anything. Let's go ask the gatekeeper. That's where I'm supposed to go next. So now we hit the gatekeeper. And so in its little database, it knows where endpoint B is located, right? So we've got um, call party information, we've got the destination IP address, and now we've got the setup messages. Hey, we, we found you. You know, let's go ahead and, and negotiate and let's go ahead and connect. So finally, when the connection does get established, that's when H245, remember the top part is H225, the bottom part is H245, where we can now negotiate potentially, you know, hey, what ports do you want to use? What codec are you using? Blah, blah, blah. So back and forth, we do this negotiation. And then finally, the audio and or video data streams can be set up. Now, I am, I am elaborating and I am talking about this in, you know, very slow. It seems like, gee, how long does it take to set up a phone call these days? No, it doesn't take that long. We're just having to go through each little piece, but it's happening within seconds. I mean, this is very, very fast how this call setup and this call connect and negotiation takes place behind the scenes. I mean, there is no delay whatsoever. It's not like, oh goodness, now that we set up video calls, it takes, you know, 30 seconds to establish a phone call. No, 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 it doesn't happen that way. It happens very, very quickly.